People of YouTube, hello and welcome to Us and Them, which is a game, obviously, because this is what the channel is dedicated to. Uh, this is not something that came out just recently and this is a, you know, day one review or something like that. It just, it's a strategy game and I have this thing where I, I thought I would just kind of walk around and, and find different strategy games that looked interesting and do a review. So, or rather first impression kind of review, not a full I play the campaign review. Um, but, so yeah, I, this is it. Us and them. Uh, it's an indie game, it's an indie strategy game, and it's also on Steam, even though what you see right now is not the Steam version. Uh, this is uh, from uh, a bundle in the box bundle, sorry to, for double bundle there, which I bought at some point. Uh, it's, it's kind of like Humble Bundle, basically, situation. I'm sure you're familiar with Humble Bundle. Uh, and it was just a strategy games, and this was there, and when this came to Steam, Maybe a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh, what? Well, that's interesting. And I, I think I have that, and I did. So I didn't have to ask anyone for a copy, etc. Um, so, this game is made by a company called Icehole. That's right. Their name is actually Icehole, which sounds remarkably close to another name that a company or a person could have that we shall not name because this is a family show. So, Icehole. Um, have uh, like one more or two more, couple more games. They are a Greek company formed in 1999 um, and as such are the oldest Greek video game making people. And it's, it's a small company, it's like two programmers, one designer and um, I think like a couple artists, which I'm not sure if they constantly work with them or whatever. Um, but whatever you guys do at Ice Hole, this is, I have two suggestions for you. So very important, I think. Suggestion number one, never make a game that um, has no video options um, that is pretty bad. And this is not just this version. You can see there's no, there's nothing like that. There's uh, news options in the game. Yeah, that's like game game options basically, is, uh, you know, also known as. And there are sound options. No levels or anything like that, nothing fancy. It's just on and off ticks and then, then high score. Is this like online connect? Look at the how the text. In Did you see that? This is apparently not the problem that just this version has that I'm playing, but also the same thing happens on Steam. Um, the game right now is, is 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 running in all kinds of weird aspect ratio modes. So it seems like the text has a different aspect ratio, and the graphics have a different aspect ratio. So it results in in sort of madness, um, unfortunately. Uh, so that that's probably the, like the biggest concern. Of, of mine with the game that you should kind of make sure that it runs on a standard size monitor in a standard aspect ratio otherwise like how does this even go past a guy who clicks okay on steam that says okay this game is going to be sold on steam does no one at all you know just take interest and check if this is even running i mean it is running fair enough like i mean this is not a steam version but again same problem apparently i just read the reviews on steam and they are describing exactly the same issues i'm having with a um a drm free download game uh, version of the game so anyhow those number suggest number one such number two obviously is uh think about changing your name I'm, I'm, maybe it makes a lot of sense to be called uh ice hole in 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 greek but like in english it's it's pretty awkward just, just saying. All right, so the game consists. Oh, it has a tutorial, by the way, which is not a tutorial. It's a video, um, which it kind of looks like a game you can kind of click, but not really. It's actually a video. Um, oh, I just on no notice the difficulty level is here. What is my? I am normal difficulty. Great. So it has two campaigns, and you can only have one save per campaign. And I'm not sure if this game was intended to be a mobile game or not, but it does feel like it was kind of supposed to be your weird stuff because you cannot save your game okay you cannot adjust your visual settings you cannot save your game you can just have one save it's basically iron Mo iron man mode or, or nothing um and that's kind of cool but it, you should be able to have a couple of iron man modes I, I feel um but anyway so the two campaigns what happens in the game you play either as the west or the east as the, as the capitalists or the communists and you try to become the dominant power or your ideology, make your ideology dominant. So now I'm going to load in. I'm going to actually edit this out because um, it plays a video uh, as a sort of a, like a uh, intro to each campaign. And they're very different. I mean, they're similar in the sense they're both black and white and old. 
and were probably in public domain. And that's why they're included in this game. But the capitalist campaign video has a guy talking about like, you know, this encroaching communism, the, the you know, the, 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 the pink, red capital, no, sorry, communist bastards are gonna, you know, whatever, rape our children, etc. Um, the communist campaign is a, the, the anthem of Soviet Union. That's it. Uh, capitalist campaign is, is the, like a, this di not dialogue, sorry, it's like a monologue of a guy plus the anthem of the United States. So it's very stylistically kind of crap. You shouldn't shouldn't be doing that. So I don't want to I don't want to like you to watch this video. So I'm going to edit out the video and I'm going to start a campaign. Let's say I'll start a capitalist campaign because they have more money and it's easier to show things off. Um, and I'll see you there. You know, what? I was wrong. You can have several campaigns. You just need to name them differently and then you can continue that one. So you can have several Iron Man mode campaigns. You just cannot have saves within those campaigns, I think. So far, that has been my experience. Maybe I'm wrong about that as well, but yeah, you can now you can definitely like it's going to be, for example, pigs, pigs two, and I'm going to have a different campaign. So that that is there. So my my apologies for wrong information a minute ago. Well, that was an exciting five minutes for me of unskippable footage I already saw. So um, another tip guys do not make unskippable intros in in a game like why what it's you know what first i asked the question doesn't the, the person who okays games on steam play them scratch that doesn't the people who don't, you know don't the people who make the game play it don't do you not want to get to the like you know beyond the the intro you already saw like the second time you start do you not did you not play your campaign twice because if you didn't, then again, I mean, I don't know, you're doing something wrong. I don't know, maybe, maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I don't get the value of unskippable intros. Maybe they're great. But anyhow, we're here. So, this is the world map. Hello. Um, as I said before about the aspect ratio. By the way, sorry about the counter being there. I'm pretty sure you, you're, you're probably seeing, I'm not, I'm like 95% sure that the Fraps counter is actually on the screen. Um, that's what happens when the game runs in a weird way. Um, anyway, so the world map greetings um, All the blue stars is is our guys because we're playing as capitalist pigs and the commie bastards are obviously with the um, What do you call it? hammer and sickle um, signs so they have you know the usual this is like 1960 I think 65 um, So the territory that was controlled by communist forces or, or governments in, 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 in that day and age is, is kind of accurately ish reproduced here now the immediate problems you see on this screen, um, in this in this on your, on your, in the case um, in this case on your video, uh, is you can't zoom. There's no zoom. This is this is it. The map does not move, and part of Alaska is for some reason cut off, and California is non-existent, which isn't a huge problem, but it's a bit weird. Like for example, the size of this thing on the right side, and the fact that it cannot be pushed away in any manner. Um, and that I cannot interact with the map besides just clicking the areas here is really weird. It's it's quite strange. Um, so I'm not sure that that's a that's a great idea. That's I would not make if I were to make a game. I would not. I would make it so that I could interact with the map as opposed to just kind of click it around and having parts of it cut off. And also, where is Antarctica? I mean, why can I not just place my agents on Antarctica? Anyway, so gameplay finally. Well, actually, this is gameplay, but um, game mechanics rather. So you cannot. This is not a game where you attack people with armies and nuclear weapons, etc. This is mostly um, sort of government change, uh, facilitating government change um, type of situation. So you have spies. You have this your force pool. We're looking. I think you access over here. So you have spies. You have uh, assassins. It doesn't say here who they are, but I think this is the political expert. Uh, it's like an engineering expert guy. I think this is economical expert. Um, this is military dude expert, and I think this is science dude. So you can deploy them around the world. So and also besides these characters who are, they, they look exactly the same for both sides. So when they have them, when you see their characters, they're gonna have exactly the same picture, which is slightly disappointing. Um, and besides them, there are also this, the so-called heroes on the map. So for example, as America. Uh, or as you know, whatever capitalist we have uh, Henry Kissinger, and he has a special power, which is that whenever he goes somewhere, um, the interactions, uh, sorry, uh, the intervention cost is reduced by fifty percent. Uh, so military intervention is going to be cheaper. 
if, if Kissinger is there. Now, for example, and he can move somehow. I'm not sure how can... There's a way to move him around. I'm not exactly convinced. Ah, yeah, there you go. That's how. So you just click on it on the country and he moves. No, I don't want him to go to Brazil. Um, Hoover, for example, cannot move. So not all characters can move. Uh, because he's the president, he has to stay there. And his power is that he makes all enemies' units visible in USA. It's pretty good, because you're going to see that in a moment. It's quite useful. And, uh, so for example, we should also have the Pope. There he is. And he adds plus five to capitalism in every country he visits. So he can go around and visit countries. He doesn't have to stay in Italy. Uh, so that's his power. So, for example, we could say, Yo, Pope, how's it going? Uh, why don't you go to USSR? Hey, what? You can't go to USSR. Pope, don't fuck with me. Pope. Okay, all right, fine, fine. Uh, go to Libya. Uh, Libya. Okay. Oh, maybe he can. Oh, maybe he can only travel to Western countries. So let's see which one is kind of in danger of being communized. There we go. So um, Nepal is in danger. Can the Pope go to Nepal? You know what? Fine, Pope. Don't go anywhere. That's okay. We, we'll we'll move Kissinger around. You can you can stay there. Um, or maybe you want to go to like London. No, you don't. Oh, who's this guy? Kim Philby. Uh, makes all capitalist units in the UK visible. Ooh, he's a he's a bad guy. Oh, Lizzie, how's it going? Uh, increase capitalism by one percent to all Commonwealth countries. Thank you, Lizzie. You're the best. Uh, the fun part about the heroes is you can kill them. Uh, now. So if you go to a work pool, you can deploy these dudes. So for example, we want people in, you know, in a, in a major area, right? So Union, uh, where we have uh, Leonid Brezhnev right now, who is, um, oh, he does make everyone visible in USSR. Okay, well, it's fine. It doesn't matter. I mean, this is not, we're not trying to win this game. I'm just trying to see, show you how this works. So these guys are arranged by skill. So I'm going to get my best um, spy and send them to USSR. I'm going to get my, for example, my best assassin and send him to USSR, um, etc. Uh, you can automate this pro uh, uh, this um, process by just pressing, play, pr pressing the button here, place units automatically, and it will happen. And it, it just sends them somewhere, I, you know, whatever. I don't know where. Who's this guy? Uh, Lech, Lech Falesa. Ah, okay. I'm not familiar with him historically. Right. So we send all those guys, but we need to send everyone else. So let's just send, because this is like, there's a lot of micromanagement here, and I'm, I'm not willing to do that. So I'm just going to distribute people around a little bit. Um, now, what else you can do here? Because obviously we have three and a half million space credits, apparently. Uh, we can make people. So we don't have networks yet. We'll get to that. Uh, and the way you make them, you just, you order them in. See how the text is weird? Like it's, I can't even see the, whatever. So, they are pretty expensive dudes, so we could like do that, maybe like get one of each, see how much we spend, and then... Uh, is that what makes them? So if I go now to here, this is going to be made? Uh, no? Oh, it's going to take a turn to make them. I understand. Okay, cool. Um, so this is the list of countries here, that you can like just interact with kind of go to like say this is Guatemala and it's capitalist government uh, but though almost half of the population is coming uh, is, is leaning towards communism besides that so the government can be not in line with the population's desires that is absolutely possible and that is a pretty good grounds for a revolution um, or revolt to happen uh, it can happen either naturally or you can cause it with one of your agents so in terms of like the interaction with whatever the, the specific game mechanics it, the idea is is cool like it's it actually kind of makes sense it sounds like a fun thing to be doing but the execution is is quite poor so what else is here is uh so the importance of the country uh, strategic importance of the country is basically a difficulty multiplier for different tasks about the country and how much um campaign score it can give you if you convert it uh the income the luxuries is the, just the like the luxury level so if you have a, a your agent which is also another cool thing Whoever your agents in a country that has low luxury level, they're, they will be less loyal to you than if you have stationed them in Paris where they're doing cocaine and having sex with hookers. So 
that also influences stuff, and that's, that's, I think that's a pretty cool addition in the game. So then there's uh, resource production levels, uh, how much they need also, I think, and they are obviously not doing so well. Technological level, military level, so this is a, a crap country, Guatemala, I'm sorry, but you know, in this game, it, it's, it's pretty crap. Um, so that's the countries. There's also the master plan thing, which if you don't want to micromanage your dudes, you can just tell them, in case of this, all assassinate uh, all assassins do this. So try to assassinate anything that is the above the chance of success of seventy, etc. So you can just automate it. it. It's quite like rough automation. It's not very subtle, but it's there. So you can use it. I haven't actually used it yet. Now besides all this, there is also research. Um, this is the so there's there's like three tabs, so the three research tabs we have in the game. So we have the space race, nuclear weapons. And devices. Uh, spaces uh, and nuclear weapons are kind of similar in the sense that you just devote money and technology units, so your two resources um, that you need to, to research stuff towards them. Uh, in terms of the space race, whoever gets to a, um, uh, a, la a landmark achievement in space race, they kind of get the bonuses from that. And if when you when you're s there as a second country, you don't get anything. In nuclear weapons, I think that is not so. You get the bonuses anyway. Uh, but again, you cannot really directly influence this. You're basically doing this through how much money and, techno and technological units you can devote to it. Now, devices is more like the straightforward research that we kind of know from different games. For example, you can research Dead Drop Spike, which is uh, allows, um, I think... Yeah, it's, it allows to gather. So the, basically, everything here helps you gather information better. Everything here helps your military. Everything here helps your assassins. Everything here helps interrogation and um, also trying. Also, when you are being interrogated, if you have research done here, then you'll be able to um, withhold the information and not give it to your enemies. When this is this happens when one of your agents fails um, and is captured, so. Oh, but again, the interface is, is kind of crap, so because in order to select any of these, you have to just leave it on that. So let's say I want to research dead drop spike, I need to leave it here and exit this screen, and that's how I research it, which is which is not exactly a, a great in terms of design. There's a lot of cool kind of ish stuff here. Like, look at the teddy bear with the camera in his eye. That's pretty cool. Like this seems like the artists who were working on this um, had some cool ideas um, but the people who decided on like look at that how cool is that tie that like that should be the symbol of this game like a tie with a device attached to which a pin photo camera in a tie that's cool but like you cannot interact with the map and there's a lot of micromanagement and that's not cool so again I feel like just like I was saying and there's a lady she's, she's all like oh I, I think my uh, joy is locked um, so yeah there's so the arts arts part of the game is pretty cool um, design and interface well I guess interface is part of design is a bit weird so why don't we in, uh, where is this lady let's research the lady so we're gonna be researching lady for two months um, actually let's research something that only takes one month um, whatever let's do the first thing that is here and then you exit out of this and that is being researched so in order for all your people who are now I think been deployed for in order for them to be um, actually operational because now they're not they, they you cannot click on them unless you want to get rid of them you just need to end the turn uh, and you give the turn to them and we're gonna see some news and I'm gonna drink some water so obviously as I said before the presence of enemy uh, so the presence of enemy agents are is revealed uh, by Hoover um, uh, and that helps us because we'll be otherwise you don't see them so you can see them either through Spies, if you have a spy in a country and you don't have Hoover in the country, that spy will gradually find other agents and then you can do something about them. But if you cannot see them, you cannot do anything about them. So it, it, again, it's a pretty cool mechanic and it's a shame. This is just Hoover finding stuff. Um, it's a shame that it is hindered by some design choices. The, the core mechanic is, that is. So, um, yeah, what's this guy's name? Um, Faisal is also kind of doing the same thing as Hoover is doing, but in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and this is already what our spy spotted in um, 
in in Soviet Union and other spies. So basically, uh, oh, so and Che Guevara can also move around. So we we found him in Ghana, and then we're here. Okay. So now the, America, because Hoover reveals every agent, that's his power, and I think. In Saudi Arabia, we can also see every agent because that is the power. Oh, and Pope. Oh, the Pope moves around on his own. I get it now. Okay, Popey. All right. Pope. Doesn't even say which Pope. Come on, guys. Just a little bit more effort. Jesus. Um, yeah, so makes all communist units in Saudi Arabia visible. So it's basically like the Hoover of, of Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have, uh, thankfully, some people here. So when, for example, your engineer or resource expert is in the country um, that is yours he's just helping you generate extra resources um, and this guy's obviously can be having spy in your own country is basically doing counter spying so which is again useful now we can try for example and get some of their guys to work for us uh, in for that spy is very useful because he can bribe other agents so uh, we could if we press bribe and say we want to bribe his counterpart the other spy guy um, this is the price we need to pay to, to get that guy. It's half a million dollars. Sorry, one and a half million dollars. Uh, again, interface problem. See, after that I clicked cancel there, it deselected my spy. If, if I want to try something else, I have to reselect my spy, reselect bribe, and then click on the next unit, which is pretty annoying and we shouldn't be doing this. Okay, so you can see that it's a lot cheaper, almost half price for the assassin. Which is cool, you know, that's that's fine. And uh, let's see how much is this poor mustache dude. Um, how much does he want? Wow, he's an expensive fella. Okay, so we can also try and arrest him. Uh, for example, uh, it, would, it only has 26% chance of arresting a spy. Uh, and you can increase that by pouring money on it. Which is again a cool mechanic. If you have money to burn. And hey, you know, we are the West, so we have money to burn. So you can go all the, you can burn all your money, I think, and like bring this up to gajillion pound, sorry, dollars, and it was gonna be have like it, it can actually go up to hundred hundred percent uh, level. Uh, but um, let's see how much it is uh, to, for example. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I think if you fail in this case, um, your experience grows anyway. So whatever you do, whatever action you do, your experience grows, and that's pretty cool. Uh, but if you keep giving them a low percentage uh, of success missions, they will their loyalty will drop, and they'll be like, "What are you guys thinking? You're sending me on such a difficult mission." But at the same time, they are um, their skill level is going to get higher. So the, the the more difficult the mission, higher the skill level becomes after it, even if it fails. Uh, but let their, their uh, loyalty will drop, and then you have to maybe bring them back, kind of keep them at home for a bit but you're also still paying their money for them so it's kind of a um, you know it's a trade-off uh, and which is cool so it's not a there are no direct upgrades in, in the game not really and that part of it like the, the what was written down it seems like in the design document of the game where it was like this is the if this was a board game for example this would be pretty cool um, but as a video game because of the you know some programming and interface bullshit uh, it, it doesn't really work so instead of arresting someone, what are we going to do is we're going to try and assassinate um, the assassin. Have a default 65% chance of success. We're going to spend some money and bring it up to 75%. That sounds okay. Yeah, well, let's, 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 let's give him half a million. Half a million dollars to... Oh, wow, that's, that's a lot of money for assassination, man. For that money, I could have probably assassinated the entire West London. But anyway, so proceed. And another obstacle was removed on our way to victory, which is cool. So that's that's done. So that guy is dead. We killed their agent. They won't be able to do crap. Um, now, we don't obviously have to operate in our country. We can also be operating in someone else's country. So, in, I mean, in an opposing country. So we revealed there's a spy here. But we also know that the Bre Mr. Brezhnev is here. So we can take, we can try. I actually succeeded in, in killing Brezhnev <laughs> last, last time I was playing this, just as I was preparing for the video. So we can try it. Um, it's actually quite a high chance because this I think this guy has a very high skill. 55% to kill Brezhnev. I, you know what? Any day. I would, I would take it any day. So, yeah. Leonid Brezhnev dies in the hands of an enemy assassin and the communists will no longer benefit from his presence. I don't even know what his benefits were, to be honest. He's dead. Uh, so obviously he uh, spent his action, so we can't really use him again. 
So instead, why don't we see uh, create a network? That's what we do. So network is, is kind of cool. You create networks with your spies, and if a spy is a member of a network, then he gets benefits from that network. But if the network grows too big, it's going to be easier for the enemies to counteract it and dismantle it. And for example, a spy could, if you catch one of them and he um, he talks, then he could give away the entire network. So it's kind of dangerous. Uh, so it's cool to have smaller networks um, and get the kind of smaller benefits, yes, but at the same time, it's higher security level. So let's create a network and you can give them names, which is pretty cool. So create network, uh, band of brothers. No, hell no, let's call it something else. Let's call it uh, scrubs for life, liar, life. Uh, okay, and um, okay, select a spy to connect. This is the spy I want to select to connect. Oh, there we go, so you, ooh, wait, what? Did that not happen? Okay, so maybe I could take another spy somewhere. Uh, possibly I have one, maybe, please. Where's my other, oh, there you go, spy. So I can say, connect to network. Uh, okay, here? Yes, all right, cool. So these guys are now in a network. Uh, and he also spent his turn because of that. Oh, let's try and kill Mao Zedong. Because that's always fun. So, assassinate Mao. 11%. Oh, that's not very good, is it? It's just, uh, probably not going to happen. Uh, let's try anyway. Uh, he died. Hey, you know what? Whatever. Uh, financial sabotage. 35% of success. Let's go to, like... Oh, that's a lot of money. Ah, fine, let's do it. But apparently this was not enough. His name is Illusionist. Oh, you can change their names as well, I think. So, for example, where are they here? I think we could... Hey, where can we... We can type it some... Ah, oh, there we go. So, we can rename this guy and call him Richard. Ow! Well, I was typing a name. How... Just... I cannot press C while... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Because when you press C, you go to country list. And he just so if I if I want to call him C, I can't because he just oh. do you see do you see people of YouTube what I'm talking about? Cool concept, great on paper. It's broken. The interface is is broken. It's not working. This this is weird, man. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go. Let's let's go back. All right, I'm not gonna rename you w with anything. You know what? I'm not gonna rename you. It's fine. Like, so you can. In an XCOM style, let's let's call it that. It's, that's a huge praise for this game, but let's call it that for now. Um, you can rename your your units and give them the names of your parents and whatever uh, your your pets and your friends and I mean who are we lying to? Obviously, you don't have any friends. Anyway, so that's the core concept. Uh, besides what I showed you, um, so all this is done to actually before I I, I talk about what I was going to talk about. All this is done to shift the alignment in the world. And this is shown here, partially obstructed by the Fraps counter. So if you, if the capitalists go to, actually it, can, it tells you, yeah. So if capitalists reach 85% uh, of world sort of control, they win. If the communists reach 75%, because their task is slightly more difficult, they win. And you do this by changing governments. And to change the governments, you need to change the hearts of the people. And change the hearts of the people. You need to use your spies and and, and all these all these people the same way, the way I showed you. So el eliminate enemy agents by assassinating them, for example, again and again and again. Uh, spending money, making money so you can spend money. Yep, deadly masterpiece. The guy's dead. Um, also, obviously, sending your agents to the communist countries and, like, Angola, for example, so we could send... Oh, man, this guy has no training whatsoever. Okay, that's fine. So let's send him to Angola. Yeah, and um, changing the hearts of the people there, influencing them so they go towards capitalism. And then if you have uh, the political expert, which is this guy. Wow, this is his skill level is really low. Um, he can try and to incite a revolt. 
uh, after probably sufficient political sabotage, etc. If the revolt is incited, the enemy may decide to do a military intervention. And it's kind of a bad news for them anyway, because even if it succeeds, it's kind of it's kind of bad because their people will be like, "Whoa, you so why are you so violent, USSR?" Uh, if it fails, it's a complete disaster because you lose the country, everyone hates you, and even even if it's a success, three percent you lose the three percent here on on the um, on the general scale because everyone in the world is gonna think that you are dick, which is kind of you know this is trying to imitate the, the general sort of, you know, how the psychology works, I guess, you know, whenever some country uses military intervention, everyone just goes like, you know, peace now, today, you know, screw you kind of thing situation on TV. So that's, that's what the game is trying to imitate. And that's pretty cool. Again, very, very nice concept, cool on paper. Yeah, I'm not sure it works necessarily in, in the form of this uh, digital product. So that's the idea. And when you change sufficient amount of countries, uh, you get uh, you you raise raise your sort of level of communism or capitalism and eventually win. There's another way to win, which is changing the government in the core countries. So if you manage to make USSR capitalist, or if you manage to make America communist, then you win by default. Doesn't matter what else is going on in the world. You can ignore the entire world, and if you manage to change the government here or here, you win as well. Um, Another thing that helps to change the country and the people's attitudes toward it, you can see, for example, here, that 1%, I don't know you can't read it really, but 1% of the population moves to capitalism each turn as a result influenced by adjacent countries. So this country, this country, this country, this country, and this country, because they are capitalists, are slowly but surely convincing this country, that uh, which is Angola, uh, that uh, they should also, you know, it's a good idea to be capitalist. So let's do it, guys. Um... And that's that's how we can do it. So obviously, capitalists in many instances have superiority numbers. So it's it's kind of easier um, to change people's mind as when you're playing the capitalists uh, as opposed to when you're playing the communists. Obviously, it kind of imitates what would probably happening in real life because you know, I mean, I I was born in Soviet Union and I kind of you know there's always this vibe of like you know life is better in the West and obviously the in the level of sort of affluence was always higher. So it, it kind of makes sense. It makes sense that luxury levels in the communist bloc were always lower. So people want goods, people want comfort. And where do we get the comfort? Oh, it's in the West. So they, they just by being there and being rich and successful, the West is influencing the minds of people in the communist country. So which is kind of also kind of imitating this world. And that is also kind of cool. So that's, that's basically the idea. I'm not sure there's anything else. I know I didn't show you much. Like I showed you one turn. Let's make another turn. Hey. Uh, let me show you much of the stuff happening. Um, we have been deprived of the service of a worthy agent. The assassin remains unknown and is probably preparing his next blow. Oh, no! Enemy assassination. Oh, we lost Illusionist. And enemy financial sabotage in the USA. Okay, very good. So they're, they're actually... Seem to have their shit together. Excellent. Obviously, I didn't really order any... Wow, it's... Yeah. So a lot of stuff, a lot of bad things happened. Um, Edgar Hoover, though, sees everything, so it's good that uh, we have... Uh, ooh. Mosquito. Lucifer. Uh, yeah, so they're obviously their loyalty and their kind of... Uh, their general morale kind of falls after, you know, their co-workers die, obviously. Um, and we now have researched... Dead uh, drop spike. I was kind of thinking, like, is that the correct anthem playing? But yeah, it's the correct anthem playing. Uh, so excellent. And now this is blacked out. It means we, we we researched that, and now we can research hollow coin concealment or whatever. You know, just bug detectors. Where was that that tie? I really liked that tie. Um, that's pretty cool. Fiber scope. No. Yeah. There you go. That's pretty cool. That should be this really the symbol of the game. So. Yeah, and now we're in March. That That's, uh, yeah, again, that's how it works. So we got kind of screwed over there, but we did kill a couple of their units, and then I just ignored the rest of my units. So there is there is that element of micromanagement that is kind of boring because everything looks the same. So if the agents were different, if they had voices or something that would kind of, you know, uh, make you, convince you that this is, you know, this is, you're in a world, you know, an actual world, and, and, not, and not break... Um, that illusion that you're like you know that immersion 
Um, but unfortunately, because everyone looks the same, I mean, it would be easy to just make the different agents from different sides look different. That would be pretty easy to do, but unfortunately, it didn't do it. So it's, I don't know, it's a bit weird, man. And um, yeah, and because of that, I think it's somewhat the game is devalued. Speaking of value, this game costs six ninety nine uh, on Steam. I think that's the only place you can buy it at this at this moment. And um, uh, in my opinion, because of the problems I mentioned, it's slightly too high, but. You know, I, I would sell it for three ninety nine because of the problems it with. I would actually not sell it and be, before I, I fix the aspect ratio and the whole size thing and the visual aspect of the game. Uh, but hey, you know, I, I'm just I'm just a guy on YouTube, so so there's that. Anyhow, I think this more or less covers everything I wanted to say about us and them. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did so, please consider supporting this video in any way you can. And I'll see you next time. Bye.